Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at an accessory for your handheld PCs, your Nintendo Switch, and even your home consoles. And that product is the Vitcher One XR Glasses. I've been using this product for a few weeks now, so I wanted to share my thoughts on it, show a few use cases, and hopefully be able to demonstrate whether this is something that's going to be a good fit for you or not. A special thank you to Vitcher for providing the product for review. All right, let's dive into it. Alongside the glasses, Vitcher had sent a number of other accessories for me to test out for you guys. So we're gonna take a look at them one by one, but we're gonna start off with the glasses. I usually skip the unboxing process, but because this box is kind of neat, I'm gonna take you through it today. So once you take the glasses out of the sleeve here, you can see that the box has a sticker on the side that says you just need to pry the box open. Once you pull it apart and open the box, you're gonna see that there's two little flaps on the side with some guides, your glasses in the middle, and some instructions at the front. One thing that you'll find with Vitur is there is certainly no lack of guides or instruction manuals. You can find them pretty much everywhere. On the left side, we have our safety guidelines, and on the right, we have our startup guide. Now, taking a look at the bottom of the box, once you take out the glasses, there's another box that has all of the various nose pad sizes, so you may want to try these out and see which one fits best for you. Now, taking a look at the hard shell case, it looks pretty sleek. It keeps your glasses safe, as well as stores the USB-C cord that you use to connect to your device. Taking a first quick look at the glasses, they look pretty cool. They look like a pair of Ray-Ban sunglasses which is a very typical design for these AR glasses, but these ones do look very nice. The build quality seems pretty nice. There's some speakers at the top here, and at the bottom there's a couple of buttons, and then dials on the top of the lenses. But we're gonna take a closer look at this a little bit later on, so let's move on to the rest of the unboxing. Moving back to our storage case, once you remove this piece of cardboard, there's actually a flap here that magnetically attaches to the top, which as long as your cord isn't getting in the way, it actually holds it in place fairly well. And now taking a look at the USB-C cord, we have USB-C on one end and on the other end we have a magnetic attachment that connects to the handle of the glasses. This is probably one of my favorite features of these glasses. I mean, look at that nice magnetic click, what isn't to love about that? Now we can move on to unboxing the rest of the accessories, I'm not going to go through it as in depth as I did for the glasses. The first accessory that we'll take a look at is the Vitur Mobile Dock, and this is used for your Nintendo Switch, your PlayStation 5, Series X, or any other device that has HDMI out. We'll go more in depth with this when I test it out with my Nintendo Switch later in the video. These next two accessories are related to the Mobile Dock, but they're mounting cases for your Nintendo Switch as well as your Steam Deck. Both are pretty much the same concept, they attach to your console and then on the back side the mobile dock actually just clicks in place and then you just clip the case to the console kind of like I have here on the Nintendo Switch. Keep in mind you're definitely going to add some weight by attaching this to the device. The next couple of accessories is a USB-C extension cord as well as a lens shade. So let's take a look at the USB extension. The cord isn't super long but it does add a bit of length just in case you're running a little bit short. Next, we can take a look at the lens shade. This is not too much to show here, it's just a protective cover for your glasses. You can also use them if you wanted to completely black out the glasses, but I typically would only use this for storage as they kind of stand out a bit. And the last accessory that I have to show you is a USB-C splitter so you can charge your device while still maintaining that signal to your glasses. This works well for phones, for the Steam Deck, as well as the ROG Ally. So if you have a single USB-C port device, you're definitely going to want one of these if you plan to charge your device. Now that we've taken a look at all the accessories, let's go over the specs and then do some testing. For the specs of the glasses, we have two micro OLED screens that are 1080p, a contrast ratio of 5000 to 1, a field of view of 43 degrees, 1800 nits of brightness, and it's 2D and 3D capable. The glasses themselves are very light, coming in at 78 grams. We have two built-in spatial audio speakers that are Harman Audio EFX tuned, and a number of other specs. I'm going to post three screens of specs. Feel free to pause the video if you want to take a closer look. Now we'll get to the testing. I did test this on a number of different handhelds and it worked pretty much across the board as long as they could do video out either through USB-C or through HDMI. It's very difficult to showcase what it actually looks like to use the glasses, but I'll do my best through a couple different simulations. For the first demo, I wanted to try to simulate what it looks like to look through one of the lenses. Of course, your eyes are gonna be a little bit closer to the lens than what I'm showing here. But the main purpose of what I'm trying to illustrate is you can see through it, the image is slightly transparent, and you can also see a little bit of daylight from the bottom. 
And of course, wherever you look is where the screen is going to be. So if you're looking at the roof for an example, let's say you're laying in bed looking at the roof, the screen will be on the roof. If you're sitting at a desk looking at the wall, it's going to be on the wall. And of course, the depth perception that your eyes are going to perceive will kind of determine how big it looks. Not to be confused with the actual size of the screen, that's always going to be the same, it's just what you perceive. For this next test, I wanted to show you roughly what to expect for the size of the screen. So this was roughly what it looked like when I was sitting here. I was looking directly at my monitor and I saw that it was a little bit taller and about as wide as my ultra wide screen. So in this case, I actually saw more screen when I was using the glasses than I would have seen if I was looking at the monitor and playing through there directly, at least at this particular distance. And a little bonus side note is this is actually the Nintendo Switch hooked up to the mobile dock, which which is something I'm going to go a little bit more in depth in in the next couple sections. One thing to note that I noticed while testing on the Nintendo Switch is that when you're connected to the mobile dock, the Joy-Cons won't actually work if they're still attached. This is something that Nintendo has built into their software. So for the controllers to actually work, you have to have them detached. You can also add something to block the pins so that they don't make contact with the console. You could use some captain tape or something else. Or you could look into 3D printing something that would slot into the rail and also have another slot for the Joy-Con on the other side, like a double-sided one. I wasn't able to locate anything online when I did a brief search, but I'm sure that somebody has made that. To connect to your Nintendo Switch, make sure to grab the USB-C cord at the bottom of the box. You'll definitely need to use that particular USB-C cord to make this work properly. Some things to note for the dock when using with the Nintendo Switch is it does have an internal battery that comes in at a pretty large 13,000 milliamp hour. This dock can connect anything with an HDMI port. There's also a USB-C port that you can plug your Nintendo Switch into and two other ports so you can connect two pairs of AR glasses to it. If you have two pairs of Vitcher glasses, it's going to be a seamless experience. They can both pair up to the dock. However, it's hit or miss if a second pair of air glasses from a different brand is going to work on this. It seems to be that some do and some don't. For example, the pair of glasses I was showing just a second ago were the Legion Go glasses. They work perfectly fine with the dock. I did also test a pair of Enreal Air glasses and unfortunately they do not work. Overall though, the mobile dock is a great accessory, let's say for the Nintendo Switch or your PlayStation 5. Anything in which you want to have your own personal screen for gaming. And now we'll just transition into what is the actual gaming experience with these glasses. So this gameplay that you're seeing here is actually a replay that I saved from my Nintendo Switch when I was actually using the glasses, which I have to say was a pretty good experience. I didn't feel like I had any disadvantage using glasses instead of a TV or monitor. Overall for gaming, I did find it to be a very good experience once I got the thing dialed in as far as the focus and the right nose pad. If you can't get the nose pad adjusted properly, it's going to be a bad experience. For the most comfort, I actually went with nose pad number three and I had to bend it outward and a little bit up to get the angle just right. I found that the screen was a little bit further down than I liked until I actually made those adjustments. And continuing on to what it's actually like to wear the glasses, they are very comfortable, the material feels nice, they can actually bend outward so if your head's a little bit wider that's not a problem. I didn't feel like the hinges or the handles were very frail, they seem to be fairly solid and the speakers are actually pretty nice. I found that I did have to turn it down if I didn't want people around me to hear if I was in a quiet room. The buttons on the bottom is to adjust between 3D mode and 2D mode as well as adjust the volume or the brightness. As mentioned earlier, if you have to change the nose pads, they just pull straight out and you could put any one of the four sizes. I missed filming it when I took this shot, but there is two dials at the top of the glasses that you can turn left or right to adjust the focus. I did find that I would kind of slide them over all the way to one side and it seemed to be perfectly focused for me. But of course, that's probably going to change for each person individually. Overall though, aside from the one adjustment to the nose pads, the glasses are very comfortable to wear. And before I wrap things up with what I like about the device and what could be improved, I wanted to talk about one last thing that was brought to my attention just before I had finished the video. So this update is for iPhone users in particular. So if you have an iPhone 14 or below, you can get this XR adapter that will allow you to connect your iPhone to the glasses, but you do need that HDMI to lightning adapter from Apple. iPhone 15 users can jump straight in. They don't need the adapter. 
So with this app, you can actually create an AR environment where you have floating screens and you can add additional screens, use your iPhone as a pointer. My wife has an iPhone 15, so I was able to test this out and it really does work fairly similar to what this demo is showing. You can use swipe features on the phone to navigate or you can also add additional screens by opening up other apps. You can watch 3D videos and if you have an iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max, you can actually shoot spatial video straight from the camera app. Unfortunately, my wife's phone was a 15 and not a 15 Pro, so I wasn't able to test that. Overall though, if you have an iPhone, this is a nice little perk. The app is called Spacewalker. I would definitely recommend checking out if you're an iPhone user and you purchase one of these. Okay, and now we're gonna move on to the final section where I tell you what I like about the device and some things that could be improved. We'll start off first with what I like about the glasses. So I really like the magnetic attachment. It's very uh, easy to snap on and it doesn't seem to come off super easy. I really like the screen that it has. It's very bright, it has rich colors, so I've never found it to be lacking in that regard. I'm also excited for the promising AR features that they're working on, first with the iPhone, followed by Android, and hopefully we'll find that make its way to Windows. And probably one of my favorite things is darkening the lenses by just tapping a button. It really does eliminate the need for a lens cover. And for the things that could be better, some of these are very subjective, like the nose pads, I had to bend a certain way to fit my face. It could be just my particular face, or maybe the nose pads just need a bit more variety. And related to that, and probably my biggest critique, is that the screen seems to sit a little lower than I would hope. Overall though, I do really like the product. I've been using it numerous times a week, and I've actually had it as my daily monitor at work because I've been moving desks a lot very recently and have found the glasses very helpful for a private workstation. So if you're in the market for a pair of XR glasses, I can strongly recommend the Vitcher One. I do really enjoy them and I see myself using them moving forward. And that's the Vitcher One. I hope that this video was helpful in making a determination whether this is something you want to consider or not. It's very difficult to capture an accurate simulation of what it's like to wear one of these. Having used a few different XR glasses, I can confidently say that the Vitcher one is one of the better ones, so if you're in the market, I would definitely keep these on your list to check out. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.